Hello and welcome from the first medal day of the 2014 Alltech FEI World Equestrian Games. 14 millimetres of rain fell here in Caen yesterday, adding a challenging dimension for the first day of the dressage and paradressage competitions. At the end of play today, we'll have our first 2014 World Champions with the culmination of the team competitions in both reining and dressage. Our first guests on Chez Philippe this morning, our daily talk show, are from Canada, chef de keep of their para-dressage team, Elizabeth Quigg, and Roberta Sheffield, rider for Canada. Joining us in the second half of the programme, two dressage riders who competed yesterday, Yazin Romini, representing Morocco, and Swedish team member, Mina Telda. Well, first of all, can I thank you both ladies for joining us today. Roberta, the first thing I must just address with you is everyone calls you Bert, I think, don't they? Yes, I've always been Bert. You've always been Bert, what, Definitely from a very Bert. young age? Yes. Okay. Well, if you don't mind, I'll call you Bert as okay. well. that's yes. great. And you competed yesterday, actually, in that appalling weather. Did that affect you at all? Oh, um, no, it wasn't too bad. In many ways, I was pleased it was raining rather than super hot. Oh, OK. Um, it's much easier, I find it much easier to ride in cold, wet conditions than really hot conditions. Wow, so, well, that's probably quite um, unusual. Yeah. What I, is that? Why is that? Um, I don't like the heat. Okay. <laughs> I much, much prefer to be a little bit cold and warm up through exercise rather than to be cooking like a lobster. So the, the rain didn't affect your rains or anything like that? Um, not particularly. Because it's para dressage, uh, we, a lot of us ride in like proper thick, heavy rubber reins and things like that. Yes. Uh, my reins are a particularly thick um, rubber rein so I can get hold of them. Um, so, yeah, they're fairly good in the wet. It's, it's not a massive problem. If you had fine leather reins, I'm sure it would be horrible. But. I suppose what we ought to do is just explain that, that the reason that you're in paro is because you have rheumatoid arthritis. Mm. And is that, that's a, you've had that for a long time? Yeah, it started when I was 15. Um, it started in my hands first and then my feet, and then gradually it's crept sort of inward in my body and taken up all my limbs and my spine and my neck and my jaw and... Yeah, it's sort of invaded. Invaded. Well, it's nice to see you here riding with Power Dressage. Elizabeth, thank you very much indeed. And of course, you, you bring to the party huge amounts of experience, both in, in able bodied and in para. Because actually, before you took on the mantle of chef to keep for the Power Dressage team, you were, you were also chef to keep for the able bodied dressage team for, for Canada, Canada, weren't you? Yes, I was. Yeah. Um, starting back in, well, the games in Atlanta in 96 was my first games experience. And prior to that, I'd done local chefing just on the North American continent. But uh, no, it's, it's been an interesting journey. It's, uh, I did it to start with because I was retiring f from a very busy life and I didn't want to be sitting, bus sort of doing nothing. And everybody suggested that this was a way. And I was a rider, uh, right. a dressage rider. So it was a way of giving back to my sport and enjoying it. And when you started with the para dressage, um, I think it was actually 2005, I think that right. was. Yes, it was. The, it was quite a small sport in those days? Oh, Canada was very small in those days, yes. I mean, we had probably four or five internationally qualified riders at that time. Um, and we are a very large country. It's very hard mm. to put our riders together. You know, they're 3,000 miles apart. And to even get them to compete together is almost impossible. Wow. So it's quite... Um, it's a journey that we take mostly by c telephone, conference calls, because we can't get together that much. But uh, we do it, and it's growing. It's growing well. We've got a very good program, and uh, we're hoping to produce a lot more world-class riders. And of course, you mentioned that 3,000 miles of car. Of course, in Bert's situation, it's considered to be further because you, yes. we all explain, you don't reside in Canada <laughs> no. at the moment, do you? No, you but I think, I think Bert would agree. We keep in contact with her, and, and, and leading up to our games, we. We have weekly uh, meetings on the phone with her and coaches okay. and everybody, so she doesn't feel like she's too far away, no, I hope. No, you know. no we definitely, definitely keep very much in touch. Um, it's very interesting because in many ways I think we almost stay in more close contact because we're forced to through the distance mm. than maybe we would if we were really close together. Yeah, we do. Oh. <laughs> So, is Elizabeth, are you, do you have a trainer here, or are you, do you have, is a trainer in Canada? We have the team coaches. We have uh, Mary London and Andrea Taylor. 
there are official Canadian team coaches and then at home my team coach oh sorry at home my home coach is Gareth Hughes who's competing on the GB squad for able-bodied dressage here. Yes and so does your team coaches in Canada are they giving you you know protocols and, and programs? Yeah they, they give us feedback from videos and um, we, we do a lot on video and uh, they watch me doing tests they watch my training sessions um, they fly around the world um, keeping tabs on us all, making sure we're where we're supposed to be. Um, yeah, we, we try to bring them to to Europe because most of the comp competitions mm. are in Europe. Um, we have brought our team over here for lengthy periods because we don't have much competition. It's okay. just us in the United States, and we go back and forth a little bit there. But we end up a lot of the time in Europe. Okay. Mm. Well, we ought to congratulate your coaches because. But you actually qualified, I think, three horses to come here this week. Is that right? Yes, I Tell did. Tell us about that. Um, well, last year I qualified Wonder Boy um, for here. Um, but uh, he's quite an injury-prone horse, so he's out in the field enjoying himself for the summer. And then last year, double agent, my mother's horse, um, she qualified with Ashley Groundlock at Grade 1B for here and she's also qualified at grade three with me for here so she's one of the few horses that's qualified at two different grades okay. for WEG um, and then I have Bindro T who belongs to Evelyn Little uh, she gave me the ride on him in February and we've been conjuring up a partnership together all summer and he's actually the horse I decided to bring um, so although I've had less time riding him than I have with the other two um, he's a super horse and I'm really enjoying competing him. I'm really excited with what we've been able to do here. And Elizabeth, from your point of view, what, let's just talk about the role of a chef to keep. We've talked about the trainers. What, what's your, what are the pressures on you? What do you need to make happen? Everything, <laughs> basically. <laughs> no, we have a very, very big support team with our national federation. Um, and I'm the, the link, really, between that National Federation and the team a lot of the time. Here it's um, managing time, transport, feeding, uh, everything from the grooms to, to the riders. I mean, we have a, we have a total team of 17 personnel okay. because uh, three of our riders need supporters. Um, they can't manage. They're, at, in a, they're in a wheelchair. So the logistics part is quite extensive and my previous experience in television has given me that ability to move people around to make sure they get their meals on time and that being dressaged they have to be in a place for a very precise time you know your ride is at 1407 it's not 1405 or 1410 so those are my those are my big roles here just to keep the team together I've worked out in my head that I think you spent about nine years as chef to keep for the able-bodied teams, including Olympic teams for Canada. Right. Are there any differences working with the para dressers What what have you seen any differences? Um, to start with, yes, I, I felt um, the para riders don't have the expectations um, that maybe the able-bodied riders do of being looked after. Um, the, para riders actually were very independent um, because they've learned mm. in their disability to do that mm. and that was quite a relief because I thought well three or four wheelchairs and all of the things that you have to get on and off buses on and off trains sure. um, but they are they're pretty good at that and it's a, a great relief when you feel that they can look after themselves quite well okay so over the last few years, have you seen that the competitions around the world have improved in terms of oh accommodating? Oh yes, yeah. We've we've tried to educate the competitions venues. We've tried to educate the organisers, in a nice way. I mean, not 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 in a bullying way, but and most of them have been very cooperative in trying to build the the sites so that they are very user friendly. I mean, I don't think we've found anything here that was. A miss. Um, I have 1A riders who cannot get out of a wheelchair um, and with, they can go everywhere pretty well. Um, mm. No, the biggest difficulties usually are outside of an, a venue, uh, getting on a train, getting on a bus, those mm. kind of difficulties. But no, I think this site has worked very well for us. And I think it's probably a testament to 
the success both of riders and indeed the different venues competitions around the world that you've got over a hundred riders competing here oh absolutely which is phenomenal yes you know that's obviously it's shows really enthusiasm. encouraging them to come yes. um, when they get here they have an enjoyable time they they don't have difficulties with their horses no, I think they're beginning to feel that they're equally able to compete as an able-bodied person is. Okay, that's the competing. Mm -hmm. You're able to get about, you've said they've been looked after. What about the rest of the venue? Because there's, there's some, have you had a chance, uh, Bert, to go around and see any of the, the village or anything? Um, I went down to the, the village where they've got the vaulting and the raining yesterday and we had a wander around in the rain. Um, it was very wet. Um, it's nice. We had a nice time. Went shopping, got some food, had a look around. It was it was really nice. It was a nice time also for me to be able to take my groom out of the stables sure. and give her a bit of sort of attention and you know make sure everything was was all good and happy and yeah make sure the people that work for me as well as work for the team mm. were all happy and and. Preparing or, or participating in such a major championship for you, Bert, mm. how does you, does that make you nervous or are you just excited? Or how do you feel about it? Um, it's, it's a really interesting feeling because, um, yeah, for me, I've really enjoyed the journey. And coming into the games, I was almost sort of melancholy, almost this feeling of um, the journey's coming to an end. W what's going to happen when I go home? You know, my whole life has, seems to have been funneled in this direction. What's going to happen when it all goes? You're going to be working towards Brazil. Yeah, well, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no real let up now. No. Yeah. But it feels a little bit like the day after Christmas. Um, it's, um, yeah, it, it's got a little bit of that feeling to it. But it's, it is really exciting. And um, it's that sort of like, now, now we're here. We've just got to sit down, focus, ride. Do your job. Do your job. Yeah. And Elizabeth, are the rest of the team have felt the same? Is everyone enjoying themselves? I think they are very much, yes. We Good. were looking forward to being in France, and uh, I think it's uh, a great place to be. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, during this particular week, we don't get out to see very much, but some of them will be staying on to see other things and be able to visit okay. a little bit and have a little bit of a social time because the, the months leading up to this have been pretty stressful. Everybody's been working hard, and they've been based mostly in England, all of our riders. So, um, no, they, they're looking forward to going home also. When, when did they come over here to England? We came over to do a European tour in March. Okay. And you've been here ever since? Well, the horses and, t and, and two of the riders did stay. Um, one of the riders, our, our most disabled rider, our 1A, went home okay. with her horse and then came back again. But the others stayed. We competed at Hartbury. Um, we competed in Mannheim. Mm. So we had some good times and some stressful times and then you know just it all paid off to be here it was a good thing to do okay, well it is fantastic that you are here and it's very kind of you to come on to Shea Phillip this morning of course you've got still competitions to come you've got the you know the individual to come as well later on in the week I hope first of all that the weather although I know you don't want it too hot Bert but I hope <laughs> it's not too wet and you have a good time I wish you the very best yeah. of luck with that Thank but you. thank you both, Elizabeth, thank you so much for taking the time to come down. I know you've got a very, very busy schedule. Well, we've enjoyed it very much. Thank you for it's, having it's us. It's great. Well, thank, thank you, you so much. much. It's great to see you here. Well, it was very nice to have our first guest in the studio this morning. And our roving reporter, Sienna, was out and about yesterday, quite sensibly went to the indoor arena where she was at the raining. Let's see what she got up to. I'm very, very happy to be here. It's a very good day, though. And how's the atmosphere been for you guys today? Fantastic. Awesome. Do you find it makes a difference to how you perform, the way that the crowds are? Yeah, it's more fun to go in here than, uh, than a normal show, so... Uh... Check this camera out! So you're from Team Canada. How are you enjoying today? Yeah, it's been a lot of fun so far. Here are the FEI TV commentators. Hello, Ingrid. Now, I know you're somewhat of a legend in eventing. What are you doing here at the raining? 
we definitely try to encourage the German team to give their best, and it's very fascinating. Well, it's fantastic team spirit, and I wish you all the best in the eventing. Thanks very much. Cross the fingers. I've really enjoyed the raining, and now I'm feeling very inspired. I've had an idea. Minna and Yasin, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. I know you both have a very busy schedule. First thing I need to say is, Yasin, to you, we must congratulate you because you're the first Moroccan rider to represent Morocco in the, in the sport of dressage at this level. Yeah. Tell us. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. Yeah, they gave me the chance. Uh, Morocco gave me the king of... The, the first one who gave me the chance to do this was the king of Morocco. And after his aunt of Morocco, and after uh, a very nice holiday and a nice trip on the jet ski, they, uh, a, a conversation at the sea, I met the king. And uh, we were talking about my job, my work, and I was telling him that I'm working with horses and training in Holland with horses. And uh, after I told him that I was training with Anki and I'm riding Grand Prix, and he was really about, hey, we have a Grand Prix rider who is riding international at Grand Prix, and we don't know him, and he's <laughs> representing another country, because at that time I was uh, riding for Holland, because I was young, and I never thought, it was always my dream to ride for Morocco, but I always thought it was too difficult to change my sport nationality and to do all stuff, and it was a dream or a goal that I thought it cannot came true. So... Uh, after a conversation with him, he helped me and they called me back the same day and uh, they told me uh, that they want to help me with everything to support me, to help me uh, to go to the Olympics. A, a chance meeting that changed your life, perhaps? Yeah, yeah, it was really, it was amazing and I really never thought that it was, it's going to end like this. Uh, I was at the sea, I was just, I, I did it, I was with Anki van Grunsen, I was help, I, as an uh, assistant trainer with her in the Ukraine to uh, train the Ukraine dressage riders. And I have also some students who were going to the European Championship for Juniors Dutch riders. And I told her, yeah, the Ramadan is coming and I have to go with them to the Europeans. So I think uh, I don't have a holiday this year. And she told me in the plane back, she told me, but you don't, you have to go on holiday at least for a few days. So when I came in Holland, the first day I booked a ticket for five days to Morocco and my first day on the beach, I was on the jet ski and I was going very deep in the sea and there I met the king of, the, of Morocco. He was also on the jet ski. And after that, we had a conversation about my, my sport. I start talking and yeah, sometimes I'm a bit, a bit nervous about uh, and a, a very, um, how you say that? Uh, uh, I have a lot of energy, so I was really talking about, I'm writing and I'm doing this and I'm doing this, and he liked the thing that I was doing, <laughs> that, my, and that I was so enthusiastic about my sport, and he asked me, is it okay that we can call you back later? I have to ask you, as in, did you recognize him? Did you know who he was straight away? Yeah, no, the first time not, we got, because we saw each other the first time, and I was just like this, like people doing on the motor yeah, when they sure. see on Sunday when they are riding. And the second time when I was just in the water, I was swimming very deep. He was sunning, he was in the sun on, the, on his jet ski. I think it was also, it was very quiet. You, can, you, you couldn't see some people. It was so deep in the, middle, uh, in the middle of the sea. And the second time, and then we start to talk with each other about my sport. And that's why, and he asked me, can I call you back to maybe that I can help you with some things. And... Um, I never thought that he was going to help me with all these things, but I knew he did a lot for the country because the, the whole country changed completely with a lot of things. And he's always trying to help the people who need things for sports, supporting a lot of things. And uh, I think that for him, it was a chance that, that we have a, a, a sporter who was riding already Grand Prix to help him to a higher level. And the higher level was an Olympic ride. And a, who never present Africa at the Olympic Games. And yeah. that was my dream at that moment. And I told him, and he, asked, he said to me, I'm going to help you with that. And that's exactly what they did. I mean, uh, it's, it's a great, it's a very cool oh, story. It's a fairy and of course, tale. The dream is, it is a fairy tale, absolutely yeah. right. Mina, how's the King of Sweden? Is he all right? <laughs> oh, I think he's doing very well, thank you. <laughs> 
Now, you're, of course, you've been on the teams for Sweden for a considerable time. First of all, I just want to say congratulations on your performance yesterday. Difficult yeah. conditions, splashing yeah. through the water. Yeah, I, I don't think the conditions uh, made the difference for us. I was, he, I, we, he was actually, he's uh, in his form of his life. I'm really happy how he's been doing now. And yesterday was really a disappointment. Okay. So I was really angry and sad and I looked through and I did not expect that. And if you get a situation like that, which every competitor m must go through at some stage, you still got more performances to come this week. You just have to, what do you, uh, well, how do you uh, get yourself mentally over that? You have to forget it and move on, do you? Well, yesterday evening, I was not my best performance, but luckily I had my trainer, Cecilia Christofferson, and my partner. So we went, uh, we took a restaurant of our own, and I said a few things, you know, maybe not the best words, and I was really angry and disappointed and uh, sad. You know, they haven't. I didn't see it coming because he's been training so well and he's changed a few things. I, I rode in with a, perfect, with a really good feeling in my stomach and I was really happy where I was in my state of mind, in, in the focus when I was riding in. And uh, he started off really well and the canter was the best canter, I, the pro canter program ever. But still, if you, he stopped in three piaps and he doesn't, you know, never had that. And mm. uh, Let's just talk a little bit more about your horse, the Santana, of course, because uh, most of the sort of world that follow dressage will know he just has one eye now. Yeah. How did that happen? Uh, well, overnight in a box he stayed in for years. He, um, the girls called me Sunday morning and said, "You have to come. You have to come." Santana hurt his eye, and when I came, it was already grey and he had a huge scar on the eye. And we tried to keep it. Uh, we worked with it for seven weeks. You know four times a day. It was a lot of trying to keep it, but it's, uh, he got blind quite early. Mm. And then uh, we took it away, or not I, the vet took it away. And then uh, when all the tissue had uh, gone back okay, into, yeah. then he got a silicone protease. So into, because on the distance you don't, you, yeah, you can see, you know it, you see it, but it doesn't, the big hole that it's becoming, if you don't put the silicone, I, mm. I've, um, since the vet said it's not a harm for him, he can have it, it's not like that would create any problem for him. So it's a closed process. Yeah. Let's just then talk about getting your mind off, off performances and, and thinking more of other ways that you relax because a mutual friend told me that you now keep chickens, is that right? What is that all about? <laughs> a kind of recent hobby. Tell me about your chickens. Well, you know, we live on the countryside and I thought well, it would be lovely. I, I wanted to have a few chickens. Of course, it started off with my son going to nursery school and then uh, one of the parents, she was talking about chickens. Oh, I want that, I want that. And then I started off with three. And then a friend of mine gave me seven more. And then my partner said, oh, you know, that would be something. So, and then I bought an incubator, a small one. and. Uh, for the eggs, and then now I have two big <laughs> incubators, and now it's about 140, 150 oh chickens. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> and they're <laughs> different breeds, and you know, you have egg. Okay, it's it also started off because it's it's also come down. I must admit, we also breed them for we eat because sure. I want to have. I'm very picky. I, you know, I want to have uh, ecologic food. I want to have sure. you know, no, and organic. Or yeah, whatever. organic. Yeah, exactly. And. Um, then you know it li everything what they have and they have a good life since I choose to eat meat and I think even if it's really hard because I find it see them and then it but that's something I work with because I still know that they have a good life yeah so but it's also you can take your coffee and go in the some of the chicken cave and you can just sit there because if you really are it's too much you know it's coming on that and it's coming on that and then you can go in there with your cup of coffee and then suddenly two hours has <laughs> disappeared yeah. and you look at them and it's, <laughs> it's a good therapy. You know. yeah, so we've talked about jet skiing as a, one of your hobbies. What do you do to relax when you're not riding, when um, you're not jet skiing? Yeah, for me, uh, I do a lot of things. I like to go to movies, to the movie and I, we, I live in Amsterdam, so it's very close. I have a lot of things to do, so 
But what I like to do after my writing, so people cannot understand that if I'm writing the whole day, I like to go to the gym and then start to spinning with, or with, with a bike or take my bike and can bike for, for, two, and, for two hours. That's something that, I'm, that, me make, that makes me relax. But uh, I can understand that if you say with chicken, because if I clean boxes, like Sunday, if I clean the boxes and I can hear the horses are eating and the boxes are all clean, that sound of the horses that they are eating and everything is clean, that makes me also relax. So I, uh, I can understand that if you sit with a cup of coffee with 150 chickens <laughs> around you, <laughs> that you can relax and, can, and that you can go in a mind that, uh, that you can live in another world because it's so isolated sport horses. Yeah. You're always working with them. You're riding, then you're training, and then at shows, and you're always talking about horses. So that's, that's why I also like, if I go on holiday, to go with people who have nothing with horses because we're talking the whole day about horses. And I yeah. like horses, and it's my passion, and I really like it, but it's also nice to have some talk about something else with other people than only horses. Yeah, and actually, talking about going to shows all over the world. Mina, you, you mentioned about your son, Ruben. I think he's just two now, is he's he? He's three. He's three now. Mm. How, have you, how has that changed your life when you're competing? Oh, a lot. In a good, most, mostly in, of course, it's the best thing in my life that happened. Sure. Um, and uh, you get, of course, a more perspective. I love my horses and that's absolutely my passion, but it's also, it's not the end of the world when you have a bad ride. No, you know, absolutely. They still look at you and say, mommy. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, OK, that, yeah. that's it. And I've in the in, but in the competition world, it's been a bit of fighting because then you have to, because at the Olympics, he was only one. And I, I said, I don't go Th three weeks without my son. No way. And then the Federation said, oh, because and the Olympic Committee came in and says, but you know, it's not so common that athletes has kids because most sports don't have the opportunity to stay stay in the sport cool. after they no. have children. So we have. So it was a lot of um, actually a bit of fighting to be able to have him to because I can't be without him. No. And is he here in France? He was here up till we started competing. Sure. And then Grandma flew home with him. Okay. So you'll be back with him in a few days' time? Yeah, just yeah. a few days' time. Right. So Ruben's at home looking after the chickens. That's the most important thing. <laughs> He's taking the chickens, I <laughs> hope. She's <laughs> taking care of the dogs and the chickens. Yes. And, and grandmas, have, they have a time of their life. Yeah, great. Well, of course, we've been keeping you informed about the, all the different aspects of the Autec FBI World Equestrian Games over the last few days. And we've done a lot of that through social media. So let us go and get a social media roundup from Sienna. Social media has exploded overnight. I'm incredibly excited to confirm that the FEI's very own YouTube channel, since launched, has reached 5 million hits. Incredible news! Carl Hester has tweeted a photo of himself and Nip Tuck, looking extremely classy. Nip Tuck excelled himself today in Normandy, a PB of 74.1% at Team GB lying in bronze. Ben Mayer is clearly looking forward to the games with his tweet. T minus seven days until the start of the 2014 jumping competition in Caen. Charlotte Dujardin's tweet with a photo of her and the gorgeous Villegro. It's raining, but we're feeling great and looking forward to our test. On Instagram, more fabulous photos have been added. One of a huge stack of carrots and another of spectators having fun in the FEI selfie stable booth. On the FEI page, Exciting photos are up of all the action from the raining yesterday. Now that was great. There's also a bird's eye shot of the stadium with the caption, the sun is back. Tomorrow, we have a very exciting challenge for the Alltech FEI World Equestrian Games. Tune in to find out from me, Sienna, and keep tweeting. There's so much going on around all the stadiums and, and the festival. Have you had an opportunity to see anything else of the games? We went down, I went down to see in the other arena uh, where they have waltzing and raining and look at all. So we went to see there. So look, hopefully they are going on on, on Tuesday, sorry, Thursday yeah. they are starting on. So we go down and have the para oh, and no. the uh, raining. There's also a lot at the village and yeah. have you been down to the village? Yeah, yeah. me too. And But I, I wanted to go yesterday, but it was raining so hard and it was so cold. 
that I only want to look for the dressage because yeah, I, I, I like the dressage, so I thought I'm gonna look the dressage and after I want to go, but I was so cold that I only want to go to my room and take a shower. And I was also a bit disappointed about, about my ride because the horse was also very good and I made a few stupid mistakes. But uh, I have some good friends with me, they have nothing with horses and it's also good to have them with you because they're telling you, it's not like uh, Mina also said, it's not the end of the world. And it's not that if you have a horse who is doing it that you can win or that you can do something. So it's also good for me to have some people around me that say you are just young, you have time and it's not the end of the world and you can have a second chance, it's not your last chance. So uh, yesterday after the rating and after the shower I went to my uh, room. Mm. I actually, Mina, just to pick up quickly on that point about, about Ruben, about having your son, children and friends who are not involved, they really do bring you back down to earth, don't yeah. they? Oh. You know, you come out, out of a bad test or perhaps even a, a medal winning test and a child rushes up and says, Mummy, I'm hungry. You know, suddenly yeah. Yeah. it's back <laughs> to reality. <laughs> yeah. it, 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 it's, it, it's, it's actually useful. I yeah, think. It, you just have to look at you and it's like, OK. Yeah, exactly. It's fine. No, no, they are. It's the best thing in life. Absolutely. Well, thank you both very much indeed for joining us on Chez Philippe today. And, and the very best of luck for the rest of the week. The sun is out. That's going to help, I think. So very kind of you to join us. Thank you very much indeed. So that's it from day three of Chez Philippe. We'll be back every day of the Alltech FEI World Equestrian Games. So we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.